Hello, and welcome aboard to this episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to following the entire story of One Piece from beginning to end, as we focus on one volume each episode. We keep the discussions for free for new fans of the series, so this is a perfect place to follow along, whether you're new to the series or just want to revisit the world of One Piece with us. This week, we will be covering Volume 34, The City of Water, Water 7, which covers chapters 317 through 327. My name is Joel, and I'll be your host. And joining me today, we have Sean. This is Sean. And we have Evan. Hello. And we have a new face. We have Cody. What's going on? (laughs) New member of the crew. (laughs) Come on, come on, come on. (laughs) Yeah, so we uh, we're back from a, a little hiatus. Uh, we got hit by um, a Soloso beam, and now you know it's just wearing off. So we're, we're back on track. <laughs> Longest uh, so thirty yeah, we'll... seconds of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, the the chapter was on break uh, during the time. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So before we do dive into the exciting conclusion of the Davy back fight. Uh, how about we get a little um, introduction for Cody? Uh, you can tell us a little bit about your history with One Piece and uh, kind of what it means to you kind of thing. Oh, man, let's go. Uh, so One Piece is easily my favorite thing in the world. Uh, okay, I'm, ba- I'm about to be really old. I think um, <laughs> September 2004, um, there was like one of those little scholastic book orders in school. And this was like a little bit after Yu-Gi-Oh! came on, like Kids WB on Saturday mornings. And I was just... It, it it hooked me in and i see yugi's face on a little thing in the book order it's like the first volume of that manga and then like there's this whole magazine with yugi on the cover and i'm like that seems really cool <laughs> when i open it up it's not yugi in there it's like some guy with like fur all around his head getting hit by a clown and then a guy in a red vest kicks the fur guy and I'm just thinking, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen, and I need more. And <laughs> then I learned about our Lord and Savior, Bucky D. Clown, and um, <laughs> I, I just, One Piece just became a mainstay in my life from then on. And um, I actually recently moved out to L.A. Uh, just under a year ago, and Joel was one of the first friends I made out here. Um, and he very graciously extended me an invitation onto the podcast, uh, and I want to make sure I'd be able to commit and not be flaky with him uh, and give it the time that a project like this deserves. And I said, okay, I'm going to try and figure my stuff out. But if you get to a certain arc before I'm able to, let me know. And then like, I have to, and we have gotten that arc <laughs> and I had to, and I have, and I am so glad to be here with y'all. This is going to be amazing. All right. Awesome. Yeah. We're happy to have you. Happy to have you. Thanks for having to be here. <laughs> all right so yeah um needless to say uh you know cody's a big fan as well so uh, um again just a reminder this is a spoiler free podcast so you know, we're not gonna like speculate like on you know, things coming up or like how things are really tying to future stuff so we're gonna try to just focus on you know what we're going through here so you know, no need to worry about that all right so without further ado let's get back to where we left off from the last volume after arriving at Long Ring, Long Land, Foxy challenged Luffy to a Davy Bag fight, a series of competitions where the winner can permanently steal members from the losing crew. Luffy quickly accepted in order to get back at Foxy for shooting Sherry. First up was a boat race around the island. It seemed the strats were able to get the upper hand. When they were about to win, Foxy revealed his Devil Fruit powers by shooting a slow slow beam that trapped the Straw Hats in their tracks, while the Foxy Pirates snatched the first victory. As a reward, they stole the Straw Hats' beloved doctor, Chopper. Next, Zoro and Sanji had to put aside their differences in order to defeat the groggy monsters, despite their disadvantage in numbers and size. After an impressive victory, they were able to win Chopper back. Finally, it came down to Captain versus Captain. Luffy unveiled his outfit for the fight, equipped with an afro. The two captains went back and forth until Foxy seemed to be close to finishing off his opponent. To his surprise, Luffy kept getting back up again, no matter how much of a beatdown Foxy dished out. Luffy rose up, shouting he'll never give up a member of his crew, even if it kills him. Okay, so we have uh, some stakes here. Uh, so Luffy has to, uh, you know, defend his friends here. He doesn't want to lose anybody, so uh, he has to make sure he wins this fight. Okay, so let's get into the next chapter, chapter 317, KO. 
Luffy's determination has won the hearts of the entire crowd, including the Foxy Pirates. Unhappy with the crowd turning on him, Foxy tries to win them back. He uses his Soso Beam Sword on Luffy and follows up uh, by flying in on his glider, the Foxy Fighter. He rests the glider on a slow down cannonball and sets his sights on Luffy. The effect wears off of Luffy just in time for him to get out of the way of the glider, but Foxy lands a punch as he passes by. Luffy gets back up once again, but he notices that he uh, he notices something that he believes will guarantee a victory. They trade blows before Foxy once again prepares to use his Soso Beam. It sends out the beam, but then to the crowd's confusion, both fighters stop mid-punch. Luffy is still able to move, revealing a shard of the broken mirror that was stuck in his afro from earlier. He reflected the beam back at Foxy, leaving him wide open for a gum-gum flail. As Luffy waits for the hit to take effect, he walks over to the front of the ship as the crowd counts down. <laughs> when 30 seconds are up, Foxy is sent flying while Luffy makes a victory pose. I just love that the afro was the key to victory. Came through. <laughs> came through. It came through. <laughs> that was a tactical advantage. <laughs> it was. Usopp knew. He saw. He figured it out. <laughs> and like even the um like I want to say a few pages in the chapter, um, when uh Foxy is just like slugging Luffy from the glider and Luffy falls back, just like the way that the impact lines follow through on the afro itself, like reading mm. out and then falling back, like that's just I would have took a gag and made it work for the story visually. Like, what a guy. <laughs> and it pays off, too, because of, like, the setup from uh, where Luffy was trapped down below with um, uh, the, the puncher. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um, it basically, uh, <laughs> like, it, it was just, like, a happy coincidence that he had the mirror shard, like, stuck in his afro. Like, he knows it's, like, mid-fight. It's, like, we don't know exactly what Luffy sees at first. And we see him put the pieces together. He's, like, oh, this will work because I set work downstairs. So I know it's going to work here. So he has a perfect counter to uh, Foxy's move. Mm, yeah. Luffy's always come up with a resourceful <laughs> way of beating his opponents. Yeah. He just sees those little things. <laughs> I love the cannonball glider that he's like literally riding on a cannonball as it speeds up. That's such a cool move. <laughs> it's very like Green Goblin esque. Yeah, Ooh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Like, see what Foxy, but I feel like he had a really creative use of his devil fruit powers. For sure. Like, he's he's up there. Yeah, like, this is somebody who, like, has put a lot of time and, like, practice into these fights and uses the devil fruit in such, like, effective ways. Like, he throws, like, a bunch of stuff that, like, people can't keep up with, and that's why he's won so many times, like, in a row. It's because people don't expect this and they don't have like a real way to counter this they, ha- they haven't been in a situation where luffy was able to adapt to overcome it so luffy found the counter to it but i get the impression that nobody else seems to get that far yeah and maybe it's because like i mean like the way luffy won was seeing oh hey there's this little thing that happened oh that's the, what i can leverage for victory like it's that creativity and i feel like it's like a battle of that aspect mm. maybe yeah. He was also able to hold out long enough to like come up with something. Like you were saying, with most people, most opponents, he probably ended them pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but Luffy's resilient and like holds out, goes the distance. He's a champion. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of um, endurance, I think there's just something really cool about the way Oda draws people who have just like gotten the snot beat out of them. <laughs> Yeah. It's like Luffy standing at the start of the chapter and like the cross hatching. It's like, man, he's yeah. really wow. That is that is what you call hashtag battle damage. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is an that is an action figure waiting to happen. Battle damage Luffy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so they, they can sell the same figure like twice with just Exactly. Like, you know, just like with some minor costume <laughs> different Yeah. Yeah, Luffy does right. take a, a serious beating here as well. Yeah. Like like we talked about, like uh, I think a little bit in the last volume, like Foxy is like quite formidable at this point. Like Luffy is only getting up because he's so determined. Like it's who he is. Like any other person would have been like, like totally wiped out at this point. Like he's taking like so many punches and he's just been totally beat up. Like he's like like bloody and everything. And yeah, so he's just so determined to to win for his friends um, that he, he's still getting up. And he even like wins over the the crowd, so like <laughs> the foxy pirates Ooh. are cheering for Luffy, and like <laughs> I love when the countdown the countdown starts, 
Uh, that was so yeah. good. The straw hat. Like everybody gets into it. <laughs> so good. Who's is it now? He's like, wait, wait, wait. What's going on? Why are we? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the one person in musical who like is like everyone's bursting into song except them. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I think Usopp says what's going on, and then Nami says oh. that they're not moving. But I think nobody knows like what's going on. Like, they're all trying to process like what happened. Like, they, they don't know why everybody's just like well, why uh, Foxy and Luffy are just kind of standing there. Oh yeah, you're uh, totally right. Yeah, Zoro, Sanji, Robin all all got the memo, but everyone else is kind of or even Usopp steps in, and then the whole crowd steps in. Yeah, yeah, but I like the that moment where we see. Like they're both standing there, and then Luffy falls down first to show that he's not stuck in the the beam. So like mm-hmm. it shows that uh, he wasn't affected. Mm-hmm. But I like that moment of realization where we see that play out, and then um, yeah, then they notice like what's going on, and then Luffy like a boss just kind of starts like he knows the, the fight's won, so he just starts walking away to do his victory pose. <laughs> <laughs> and man, what a pose! <laughs> what a sell! He knew what he had, and he used it. <laughs> I also love like the the slow contortion of Foxy's face as it, as it's slowly taking effect, <laughs> and just then just slowly yeah. warping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then there's that final shot where he's like almost like half a circle, like he's so yeah, he's like bending, bent like out. Of, he literally bent out of shape, and then just gets launched. <laughs> it's so good, so satisfying. This guy's rocky pose at the end too. <laughs> pretty badass yo adrian i did it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, any other thoughts on this one it's mostly what i had i'm good i'm good slow mo ko <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's move on to the next part of the cover story Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 4. Goro, the whole digger's dream, is Hot Spring Island. Goro invites Gadatsu into his home to discuss his plans for the island, but Gadatsu seems to be struggling to figure out how to get in. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Goro's walking through the door, and Gadatsu's head's, like, in the window. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't have a lot of brain sp- cells to spare, and then he fell from the sky. <laughs> yeah. So that could not have helped. <laughs> Maybe Goro's like, oh, this guy probably hit his head when he fell down. Like, that's probably why yeah. he's like this. <laughs> I think, I bet it Gadasu looks... could make, like, eating soup funny. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. The birds in the background have his hairdo. Yeah. I realize that. <laughs> So it makes you wonder, like, did they come from Sky Island, or did he just land in a place that's like perfect for him? Yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe. Hmm. Are they particularly inspired? I don't know. <laughs> also, Gadatsu doesn't have any aids anymore, so like they can't help him like figure out like mm-hmm. how to do life. Basic tasks. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he's he's gonna struggle a little bit here. All right, but let's get Evan's summary for the next chapter. All right, chapter 318, closure. Foxy is sent flying to the crowd's utter shock. With a splash, Foxy lands outside the ring. The bell sounds and it's settled. Luffy is victorious. The crowd erupts in applause. Later, Luffy wakes up from a post-dual power nap, a bit confused, but the Straw Hats assure him it was no dream. He won the match. Luffy is relieved. Just then, Foxy approaches and offers Luffy a congratulatory handshake, but instead chooses vengeance. Trying to, throw, trying to throw Luffy over his shoulder, which backfires as Luffy's arms arm stretches, causing Foxy to faceplant. Moving on, Foxy honors the rule of the Davy backbite, asking Luffy which of his crew members he would like to take. But Luffy chooses to take the Jolly Roger. But instead of leaving the Foxy Pirates without a sail, Luffy offers to paint over their Jolly Roger with a new symbol. Admittedly, not his best work, but it's the <laughs> Foxy and his crew set sail as Foxy yells out to Luffy saying they'll remember this. The Straw Hats return to Tonji and Sherry. Luffy hands Tonji the Foxy Pirates Jolly Roger as a symbol of their revenge. Then Tonji invites everyone into his home 
And to everyone's shock, they notice a tall man has been sleep standing in front of the door the whole time. Robin is clearly distraught at the sight of this man, putting the crew on edge. But then, or sorry, he then makes a comment towards Robin using her full name. His, his identity is revealed as Admiral Aokiji of the Naval Headquarters. Aokiji? Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yep. Cool. Chilling. Killing. This guy. Uh, this killing. guy. Uh, <laughs> what a guy. It's such a great intro. Like just this guy who just dude's just just so illogical. And then we'll 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 get in we'll get into that later on. I don't wanna I don't want to put the car before the horse. But yeah, his full his full panel is, is him literally standing up sleeping. <laughs> But he knows Nico Robin, and this is the first time we've gotten any kind of like Nico Robin history or mm -hmm. someone from her past. Mm. So that's exciting. Yeah, it seems like it's not not a good thing. No, that, uh, <laughs> yeah, meeting here. from her reaction, not a good thing. <laughs> but I love how her crewmates pick up on that. Like like Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji quickly pick up on Robin's reaction and are like very defensive right away, which felt good. <laughs> yeah like we, love, we haven't seen see robin that. like really um act scared mm -hmm. in a lot of situations True. like usually like when it's life or death like she usually has like a like she's level-headed and calm mm -hmm. so this is like the first time like we've like seen her like really get rattled like this i think that the closest like she's come in our perception has been like in the tomb when she was saying like no like leave me i want i don't want to live anymore but i think I don't think anything past that, and even then, it was like mm -hmm. just Luffy. No. Yeah. I mean, what you what you think of Aokiji when uh, when you first saw this guy? Aokiji, I, I don't know. Like, he is such a. I don't know. He was like um, kind of hard to take serious at first because he's literally like staying there asleep, just waiting for them to show up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we can get more into that when we actually get to meet him yeah. a little bit better. Um, but I, I like the character design. Super tall. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> forget how how, how comically tall. tall he is. It's just yeah. Like... I don't know, but I feel like in this world, like a lot of the really tall characters have been very powerful in the past. Like our other uh, characters of large stature. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. They must eat their vegetables. Yeah, or we spend a little too much time on this island. <laughs> How long has he been sleeping there? He's as tall as uh, Tanji when he arrives, so he, uh, he grew a bit. <laughs> Is he standing there on the previous page, too? Like, the panel right before Tanji walks into him? Is that him in front of the door and like, tiny, tiny art? I think it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. So. That's great. Yeah, yeah it's like hard, <laughs> hard to see, but yeah, he's there. <laughs> has he been there the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were a tree. <laughs> you know how tall you have to be to be like, I thought you were a tree? Like especially in this place. In this place, yeah. particularly yeah. in the world of tall trees. Have you guys been able to successfully sleep with sleep masks? I always try to do it sometimes because I'm like, it'll get things darker. Maybe it'll trick my brain, but like an hour into it, I just have to rip it off my head. It just feels wrong. Yeah, I don't think I ever was able to to sleep no. with one. I feel like for me Certainly not standing effect. up, but what? <laughs> so I feel like for me as the opposite effect where it's like, okay, this one sense is cut off. Like my brain's so anxious that I like I need to try and hear more. I can see and that. so all yeah. the other senses get overloaded for, okay. for me. At fair, least. fair. I, I feel like usually like the light would come through the bottom. Maybe I'd yeah, have well, a good like if you get pass, a really good one, but yeah. It probably not, yeah. They are, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm actually like going back through the, the pages here. And there is the this page right after. I'm not sure if this is the same one that you talked about, Sean, but it's like um, after the Foxy crew says that, that um, they'll remember this. It, it cuts to the hut with um, Tanji and Sherry, and like the the page before that, we can see Aokiji is already standing there. Oh my God, he is! <laughs> so, wow. so Tanji is just that oblivious that this guy was standing there because he was like right near the house. <laughs> I thought he was like the. Um, 
the the door panel fabric thing this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this man was just ornamental. <laughs> I mean, well, Tanya has really uh, been home in 10 years, so I, things change. <laughs> There's a man here now. That's just how it is. Or it could be because like, he's, he's so much shorter that his, because the eyeline is short, he doesn't look up. So he doesn't like, <laughs> notice that there's a guy there. So. He could just he does be walking walk right through like, Aokiji's legs half the time. Like. <laughs> <laughs> is there some draft in here? Sheesh. <laughs> yeah, so what would you guys think of uh, Luffy's art for the, the new Joy Roger? It belongs to you. Uh, a masterwork, yeah. <laughs> so are they just the fox pirates now? He forgot the why. <laughs> not the why. <laughs> There's no why. I like to imagine Fox. I like to imagine Foxy realized that halfway through the trip back, and they're like, "Son of a bitch! <laughs> like, we have to change my name now." Like... <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's the whiskers for me, honestly. Yeah. 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 I do think he should have taken the sexy like... carpenter, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was a choice. Um, <laughs> they they could have taken the carpenter, and the Luffy decides now the fighting carpenter, the top carpenter, or the sexy carpenter. <laughs> I love that he has three different. <laughs> I do. I, I, I think Donovan's got a really cool design, though. Like just like the nails in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. It's like a nice, like, extra victory move. It's like, no, no, no. Give me the symbol of everything you are. <laughs> I'll make you a new one. I'll make you a new one. Yeah. And you'll like it. Hey, At to be I fair, <laughs> uh, he challenged Luffy, so it was his idea. Oh, yeah, totally. So he, uh, mm -hmm. he, he deserved it. <laughs> 100%. I love the reveal of the, the drawing that Luffy does. I mean, it's like Foxy's saying, like, Straw, you're so like I feel like he's about to say you're so like kind, you're so generous or something like that. Like letting yeah. them keep the sale, and then they show the, the drawing, and everyone's just like, "That's horrible." <laughs> so, oh, so <laughs> That's so grateful. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, it does look like they're bowing, you know. <laughs> I think, I think they, they're all taking a page humbled. out of uh, uh, yeah, Foxy's book where he gets like dejected or, like, anytime somebody says something oh, yeah. bad about him. <laughs> totally. It's affected the whole crew now. <laughs> I had to Google uh, scruples. <laughs> I didn't know what scruples meant. Did you guys know what scruples meant? I knew what scruples meant. You have no scruples. <laughs> That's a great like, word. Hey, I wish I, I, I wish I knew what that was, and now I do. So I'm, I'm glad. Do you want to give us that definition? Out. It's just like no morals, like no scruples would be yes. like no morals. <laughs> My English degree has to count for something. <laughs> <laughs> you earned your scruples. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what it was that made me think of this this chapter, but. I do just love the fact that Fox's crew does legitimately like care about and respect him, hmm. even though he's just a, a giant dirtbag. But he's their dirtbag. He has fun. Exactly. Though. They have a good time. True. <laughs> Seemingly, they just like go everywhere they have and host this like festival. <laughs> Navy back <laughs> circus. And yeah, they do know how to party. Yeah. They have a good time. Except there could be worse. We sell the cotton candy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't mention in the summary that when the match concludes, everyone like is cheering for Luffy, and then they realize that their boss is like sinking to the bottom of the ocean because he's a devil <laughs> freezer, yeah. and they all rush to like save him, and the entire uh, like stands collapse as they're all like trying to jump and save their boss. Yeah. This is pretty hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so like uh like Cody was saying, they uh, they do have respect for the captain after all. Yeah. I th I think that was the moment and I just totally forgotten that was yeah. it. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> and on on the next page when Luffy comes to Oda does this all the time, but I just still love seeing it, like the reaction from every single crew member all like lined up. Hmm. Like the series uh, of panels, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I love that it like keeps growing. 
So <laughs> I just really appreciate it. Like everyone has such yeah. a in character reaction to to whatever. So. For sure. And then um I did find it hilarious like in the, the next page where uh you know Foxy offers his hands and like uh <laughs> <laughs> like hamburg and porsche are like laughing um and then, <laughs> then foxy tries to throw him over his shoulder and luffy just sits there <laughs> like what an idiot <laughs> I, was, I was like what an idiot <laughs> yeah and then like That's foxy crazy. hits his head like in the process so <laughs> yeah just uh, that was hilarious so good and then he shakes it off and the next man's like all right back to business yeah like, <laughs> he's, he's got the bandages <laughs> on his head <laughs> yeah he's gonna need some new ones okay uh we good to move on Good to go. I just I just have one question. Nope. Yeah. What happened to the afro? Did Foxy Ooh. take it back? Uh, like, I, I, I think. Uh, yeah. 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 It's in a box somewhere. <laughs> back in the costume closet. <laughs> That's fair. Property of the the Foxy Pirates. They stole that. <laughs> yeah. <square. laughs> it belong to the shop. It does belong to them. That's fair. That's fair. But I'm sure Foxy will use it next time. Probably. Or he'll take away as an option so people don't hide mirror shards in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, smart. Okay, let's move on to Gidatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 5. I've decided to become the boss of the Blue Sea. <laughs> Gidatsu declares he will rule the Blue Sea as he makes an interesting choice for a seat. Oh, he's in the barrel. He's in the barrel. Yeah, he's like yeah. Uh, his his yeah. I did not realize that the first time. Oh my god! <laughs> it's just <laughs> like every page is gonna be him doing something weird. Yeah, every for sure. Time, dude. <laughs> and Goro's just kind of like sitting there listening to him. Like, yep, sure, whatever, dude. <laughs> whatever you say. <laughs> yeah, this guy's real boss material. Huh. Okay, let's move on to chapter 319, Admiral Aokiji of the Navy Headquarters. Surprised at Robin's shock to seeing Aokiji, Luffy asks if she knows him. Aokiji says they go way back. He assures them he's not here on official orders, he's just taking a stroll. Robin tells the others that he's one of the three Navy Admirals, collectively known as the ultimate military force. The Strat's prepared to fight, but once again, Aokiji tries to calmly explain he's not here to pick a fight. Being tired from standing up, Aokiji decides to lay down, but Luffy is still ready to fight. The Admiral says he'll leave, but he overheard Tanji's situation and offers to help reunite him with his people. The Strat's are skeptical, but Robin confirms he is capable of doing this. Tanji gathers up a cart with his belongings as they head to the edge of the island. Aokiji stands near the water as a giant sea monster jumps out. The others try to warn him, but it's not necessary as he freezes the ocean itself using the powers of his chili chili fruit. He says the ice will hold for about a week, which should be enough time for Tanji to make the journey to reunite with his tribe. Tanji thanks the Admiral and the Straw Hats for their help and bids him farewell. Just when it seems that the Admiral isn't such a bad guy after all, he tells Luffy that he's too much like his grandpa, wild and out of control. He initially had no intention of fighting them and merely wanted to confirm Robin's whereabouts. We decided to spare if he kills him right now. Uh oh. So that took a turn. Yeah. Really. Got real serious real quick. Evan, <laughs> what do you think of this revelation? I want to hear from him, but what do you think? <laughs> um oh sorry. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, yeah. You're the uh, uh, yeah, no, so now we really do get to meet Aokiji and um you can tell by how blase he is, how powerful he is, because he's got like no no worries in the world. Um, and then we see him use Ice Age, which is insanely powerful. <laughs> so yes, Evan, um, you were it's correct. Hold for a week, like damn. You were correct <laughs> earlier. He is he was riding across the sea. Yes, he's turning it to ice as he goes. <laughs> right, right, right. The bicycle. <laughs> I thought now, so. Now we know uh, how he was doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is a pretty cool power. Um, and I feel like we get to see it in full bore right off the bat, which is pretty cool. So, Yeah, definitely a sheer display of force. Yeah, for sure. But for a good cause. He's helping Tanji and Sherry cross the ocean. So, Yeah, that's pretty cool of him. Yeah. 
Marines doing like nice things for people. Which has something that is pointed <laughs> out by uh, Luffy at one point. Oh, right. Normally we're the bad guys. The Marines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that. You don't Great have to listen to these. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a good thing? I love it. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a good thing? Are we the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> also, um, we hear the first mention of Luffy's grandfather in this chapter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's um, something we haven't we don't really know much about Luffy's you family. Here. So this is kind of the first time. Yeah. So we don't know exactly what Aokiji's relationship is with Luffy's grandfather? Like, how he even knows him? Mm-hmm. So, this is like the first time... to see some similarities. Yeah, so he's aware of his, his grandfather. Um, yeah, but to, to what capacity? I guess we'll have to find out. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. I love Aokiji's... how defensive... Oh, go ahead, Cody. I was just gonna say, it's really cool that he's like, we're seeing like the upper echelon of the Marines. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is like one of the highest ranking people you can find in the Navy. Yeah, we've only yeah. seen one ranked higher, I think. Uh, yeah, which was... Uh... Captain Morgan. <laughs> He's so great. He's so great. He is so great. <laughs> Goes without saying. Uh, uh, how can I forget? I, I thought you meant uh, Fleet Admiral Sengoku, but... <laughs> uh, you, you're correct. <laughs> but yes. Did we see Sengoku? I don't even remember at this point. It's been a while since yeah, we there's... recorded. It was the goat, it was, right? uh, <laughs> it was um during uh Jaya. Yep. Mm. So um yeah, we do find out the the names of the three admirals. So there's only three of them. Uh so we have um Akainu, Aokiji, and Kizuru. We have translations cool. for them as well for what they mm-hmm mean do you want to give those sean i once i find the page i can't okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, uh, so, uh i kind you red dog aokiji blue blue pheasant and kizuru yellow monkey mm-hmm. i hope they can manage to get the uh the lead the the, the temple's treasure <laughs> <laughs> i hope so, olmec uh, can help them which is a hidden temple reference there for you 90s kids <laughs> <laughs> actually i think they brought it back yeah yeah i, I haven't seen it but i, I know they, well they, they, they i don't know it they, it's a weird thing they made they, they made like a fictional movie like this is a real story i'm like just, just give me the game show back man <laughs> <laughs> and then we could seem to figure out how to put that monkey together for some reason it was like the hardest puzzle in existence I, it was like the three pieces I, <laughs> I used to feel that way but you're like imagine this you are a 12 year old you are on a grand stage you are in the middle you are facing the opposite direction i have more sympathy for them now yeah. than i did like 10 years ago i, I could imagine <laughs> being like, like, on TV, it's like i forgot everything i know how do i breathe like i was just accosted <laughs> by a half naked man who demanded he give me half a pendant like oh, like <laughs> 30 seconds ago like now i have to put together like a, a structure in an opposite direction facing towards a fucking tv camera i can give her i'll give i'll give them a now i don't sympathize for the ones who are like i'm gonna put the head first i'm like no it's one thing if you can't wiggle the piece we're like come on kid that's the base come on all right i'm still bad it seems like i still remember um like 0708 um like back when like discussion forums for like series and stuff were like starting to become a thing um uh, people were like starting to um talk about okay well like red red dog yellow monkey blue pheasant it sounds like momotaro and like just like after seeing like this one dude three silhouettes just like pages and pages and pages of people like saying, okay, well, this part of the legend means like the yellow guy. He's probably coming, gonna come in like, I got, that's how like, excited I was back then and now about Momotaro and One Piece together. Just like just the sheer amount of theorizing that just happens from like one reference. Mm-hmm. I mean, once you put a silhouette there, it's all over. Like the, the speculation game begins. We got the Oda silhouettes and the Oda lighting in the same panel. We were eating good this chapter. 
but yeah, I mean, with all that being said, um, it does seem like a pretty big deal that they have an admiral here. Like the fact that like this is what he's doing at this time. Um, I think it says something. Like he's saying he's not here on official business, and like he's just like, like he's not going to do anything. Uh, so he doesn't have any official orders. Uh, his motto in the navy is lazy justice. <laughs> My kind lazy of justice. justice. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so he's he's here, um, kind of like of his own free will. But he just wanted to confirm Robin's whereabouts, supposedly. Um, but then he seems to have a you know change change of heart at the end of the chapter. Where he's like, you know what? Maybe it's better if I do take care of you right now. Luffy has like a bunch of one eighties in this chapter. I just hey, you don't have to listen to him. Wait, this guy says some pretty right on things. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I kind of mess with you. Wait, you're gonna what? <laughs> Hold on. He's a bad guy. Oh wait, no, he's he's a good guy. Oh, no, he's a bad guy. Oh, no, he's a bad guy again. Oh. Wait, we're the bad guys. He's the bad guy. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, Robin is just continuously shitting herself, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. can somebody help her? Can somebody help her up? Like, come on, please. <laughs> Yeah, only Robin really seems to have like a grasp of like how serious it is that this guy is here. Mm-hmm. Like this is the equivalent of like I've just like played a game of pickup basketball for like a hundred bucks or something with some friends, <laughs> and then like the head of the CIA comes by and is like, "Hey, well, how's it going?" I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Man, I do love like we had like just like this little breather arc of the da- like breather arc of the Davy back fight before being like. You want world building? You want stakes? Here you go. Here you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so true. It kind of just came out of nowhere. Like if they if they just fought God and then went to this, I feel like it would have had like the same effect, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you said, it was like um, a little bit of a breather to like kind of give us like a chance to catch our breath a little. And then it's like shooting right back up again. Like the yeah. dangerous was like real here. Choo choo, here comes the plot train. <laughs> Uh, well yeah we'll get there (laughs) uh but real quick before we move on oh uh, sorry have you had something i was gonna say we have another uh logia type Mm. oh yes uh the chili chili fruit (laughs) um but yeah then i was gonna say like there's like the double page spread where you can see like the the ocean itself is just like frozen over, which is, and then including the sea monster, but like there's like two pages dedicated to it. You can just see like the sheer scale of like how far his powers extend. <laughs> wow. And it, it must have consumed enough ocean for him to, because he's got a what? He's got to cross three gaps. Yeah. Three island gaps he has to cross. And he's like, Yeah, you're good. You'll be good for a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just go for it, buddy. Like, damn. It's a lot of that. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is um I just love like that panel uh where it shows like um Aokiji like covered in the ice, where uh, Robin says, This is the power of a admiral from Navy headquarters. And he's just got like the stance he's kinda of, like, hunched over, like covered in ice, and like you can see like the like the like the frozen air I, what, what do you call like like the vapor like yeah like a vapor like kind of yeah okay. <laughs> i just don't, i don't like, have a word for it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful yeah. panel though that's really cool mm-hmm. very cool i also love how like when we see the um the after effects as after tone it's like am i dreaming and it's like that secondary shot looks like the little like glistening of the ice there yeah it's like it's really pretty if you know it's like <laughs> kind of terrifying at the same time <laughs> all right you guys ready to move on ready yeah. ready okay gadatsu's unexpected life on the blue sea volume six don't forget to breathe when you spend the day digging master gadatsu <laughs> that's what helps goro dig some holes he's got to bite his lip man rough <laughs> rough stuff <laughs> Yeah, so one thing I, I noticed, um, yeah, so Evan, you had pointed out on Goro's shirt um, how it matches like the trees, like the bendy trees in the back. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm also wondering if it's because it looks like um, like a hot spring, 
so it looks like maybe like um like a pool of water with like the steam coming out mm. so I, w- I wonder if that's like that also so. what the shirt is supposed to be and maybe the trees are meant to emulate that as well so it's just an alternative thought to maybe the design there it checks out okay uh let's move on uh we'll get evan summary for the next chapter all right chapter 320 ultimate military force Admiral Akiji considers the Straw Hats to be a threat and admits a large factor in that assessment is based on the presence of Robin. Akiji says Robin has a history of using and betraying the people around her and provides proof saying even organization, or sorry, and provides proof saying every organization Robin has been associated with to date has fallen. Robin does not take kindly to these accusations and launches an attack restraining him. Akiji morphs into ice to evade Robin's grasp and creates an ice saber to counter. But his blade is met with steel as Zoro joins the fight. Sanji then enters the fray, kicking the saber and disarming Aokiji, who managed to grab hold of Sanji's leg and Zoro's arm. Seeing an opening, Luffy launches a gum gum bullet landing squarely on Aokiji's gut. With all three, three straw hats now touching Aokiji, he launches his counter attack, freezing his opponents with Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji incapacitated. Akiji lunges at Robin, freezing her whole body. Robin, now an ice sculpture and vulnerable to becoming shattered, is defenseless as Akiji goes for the finishing blow. But just in the nick of time, Luffy grabs her and hands her off to Usopp, telling them to retreat to the ship and save Robin. As Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji stand to face off against Aokiji, Luffy calls off his comrades, telling them he will face Aokiji alone. Old move. Old move. <laughs> Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's going down. It's heating up. We're pulling <laughs> down. Pulling down in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Just on this first page, I feel like Oda's line work is so clean here. And it's just like even like yeah. these little specks like in the background. I feel like they just do so much to add that hey, this is this is just serious business right now. Like the visual everyone in the frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. It feels like, like the, you can hear a pin drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the, the Straw Hats have gotten the attention of a Navy Admiral, and he, he sees them as a potential threat. So he's thinking maybe it's better to like take care of them now before they become a bigger problem in the future. Hmm. Uh, but he says that... Um, Robin in particular is the reason why he seems uh, he, it seems that they're, they're so dangerous. Yeah, and I feel like for the readers, like that that statement does hold some merit because the last the only interaction we've seen Robin have with any other crew or like comrades was Crocodile, and we know that she was using Crocodile the whole time. So yeah. like that's kind of our only um, evidence as readers to go off of, you know? Yeah. And so with Crocodile, she was pretty much ready to like turn on him if she needed to. Like she she had that like ready to go. Like she was prepared if things went south for her, she could defend herself against Crocodile. So it makes you wonder, does she have like a contingency plan for the Straw Hats too? If she mm-hmm. needs to kind of like mm-hmm. you know, like switch sides or whatever. So it makes you like wonder like you know what, what Robin's thinking here. Uh, because it seems like she's had a pretty uh, consistent track record of being like the only survivor of all the organizations that she's been a part of so i still want to believe she's a good person i think i trust i trust Lu- i trust luffy's uh judgment of character that's fair i mean much. luffy's had <laughs> good judgment in the past but um yeah we, we don't know if that's gonna come back to bite him um he doesn't really know robin that well uh so we want to believe that robin is a good person um but that we don't really know where her intentions are here and like we talked about before too like she doesn't seem to be fully committing to the crew like we mm-hmm. said like she doesn't use anybody's names she just calls them by the role that they are on the crew it's mm-hmm. true she definitely yeah. keeps her distance yeah i found it really interesting this chapter that the first person to specifically defend robin was zoro who has been the mm-hmm. least trusting of her this entire time yeah, that's a good, good point. Zorro. 
Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Nice fella. Yeah, I, I, I do say... love seeing the riled up when, like, in defense of Robin, mm -hmm. as we've seen for the past couple chapters. Uh, like I think right after hearing the thing that he's been like, "Hey, <laughs> like you you joining us like like this just in a road work? That's kind of sus." We, <laughs> yeah. As soon as someone true. else says, he's like, "No, no, that's BS. No, we're, we're no, 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 no. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think I think I Zoro's I think Zoro's intentions are more to be loyal to Luffy because mm -hmm. Luffy picked her to be on the crew, and he's like, "Well, if I'm gonna stand by Luffy's decision, if Luffy says she's on the crew, then I'll accept mm -hmm. it." So I yeah I think it's um I think that might be his driving factor there. Maybe yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. And uh, Sanji jumps in too. Uh, of so course. Sanji's also. Of course. Quick. <laughs> He's probably just mad that Zoro got there first. <laughs> 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 but it's pretty cool how um how Kiji grabs like the blades of grass, he throws it in the air and just freezes it, makes a sword out of it. Yeah, it's a cool move. And just that scene of him like reforming himself out of the ice. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know we've had like some neat like Logia recoveries with like crocodile and, mm. and elbow like this one. It's like kind of brutal. <laughs> yeah, because it does look like he's kind of forming out of like nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It, it does look pretty brutal too, like the way like he gets snapped in half by Robin. Like he gets like mm -hmm. broken to shards. And he reforms himself, so it's rough. <laughs> the chopper's like, "Whoa, he's dead!" <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the update, chopper. That's his uh, official doctor's. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's your official <laughs> doctor's diagnosis. diagnosis. <laughs> that opinion. bitch is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zero sees a saber. He's like, "It's me. That's me. That's my cue." <laughs> that's why he jumped in. He's on sword. <laughs> He just saw a sword and was like, oh, my turn. I take like everything he says. He doesn't care about Robin. He doesn't care about Luffy. He just wants to fight. He just wants to sword. <laughs> oh, I'm the yeah. Yeah. And then the way the Robin gets frozen over is mm -hmm. like devastating. Oh, jeez. Not good. You can see like the look of horror in her face as uh, she just like freezes over. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me, Joel. <laughs> this whole chapter her expressions are just i'm sure i'm sorry but like they're just like heartbreaking like, no i agree <laughs> yeah, just like absolutely before she has the train to flu like just the her eyes oh my god she's broken it's i feel so bad mm -hmm. look i'm sure she hasn't had a terrible tragic backstory it's this is all a misunderstanding <laughs> yeah no way yeah yeah <laughs> It's just a series of, of, of unfortunate events. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. Um, but I do love that Luffy, uh, his, like the one thing he says is like, we don't care about the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a great line. Yep. For sure. And then like the, um, the panel of Aokiji like winding up the punch, being like, oh, I could just, you know, punch her right here. And Luffy has to like jump in and like barely like moves Robin out of the way in time. And then it's like it's a cold, game of like man. cold so potato. Cold. <laughs> and then cold potato, yeah. <laughs> and so it's kind of like an all hands on deck kind of situation. It's like everybody, like, let's get Robin out of here. Luffy's like, all right, uh, it's up to uh, you and me. We're going to fight right now. And Usopp, too. Usopp has a great uh, heroic moment where, like, uh, I'll, I'll keep about to stomp on Robin's face while uh, Luffy's like holding her. And Usopp runs and grabs. Robin out of Luffy's hands, and then Aokiji stomps Luffy. <laughs> Who's up managed to get Robin out of the way in time? Close call. I do love the last page of this chapter with the face off of Luffy and Aokiji. Mm -hmm. For sure. With like the, the frozen hand. Yeah. All right. Anything else? All right. Let's move on. Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 7. You have to eat with your mouth on a day of digging, Master Gadatsu. They take a lunch break, but Gadatsu seems to struggle to figure out how to eat properly. <laughs> how did this man survive to adulthood? <laughs> did, like... I don't... 
<laughs> For context, this guy is putting a sandwich in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did he not fall Oof. off a cliff or like forget to breathe for an entire day and just die? Like, they don't. <laughs> He's the unique one. I'll give him that. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. The birds are back. <laughs> I love them. I hope that I hope that, that comes to be something. I hope something happens with the birds. Maybe they're like the um, the ones guiding him. Yeah, I'm maybe. To be like, <laughs> yeah, you got to eat with your mouth, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, chapter three twenty one, one on one. Chopper and Usopp tend to Robin back on the Mary as they pour water on her in the shower. It seems to help as she begins to thaw. The rest of the crew arrives back at the Mary, minus Luffy. Zoro and Sanji are eager to get back to help their captain, so they jump in the water to try to help the ice melt from their bodies. Usopp scolds them for leaving Luffy behind, but they say he ordered a one-on-one -on -one fight, so they had to honor it. Luffy fights the Admiral, but his body is now partially covered in ice. Luffy sends him flying into the air and tries to attack with a gum gum storm, but it proves to be useless. Aokiji is not affected and proceeds to freeze Luffy's entire body. He decides to honor his one-on-one -on -one agreement with Luffy, which means he can't go after the rest of his crew. He warns Luffy that it's a mistake to keep Nico Robin on board his ship. Instead of finishing Luffy off, he decides to leave his uh, frozen body intact as a favor for taking down Crocodile. He realizes their next destination must be Water 7. He marks they're getting close to Navy headquarters as he takes off on his bike. Back on the Mary, Chopper is happy to report that both Robin and Luffy's hearts are beating, so they will be okay. This up worries that they will be hunted down by more powerful people like Aokiji. The crew try to get some well-earned rest, but Robin seems unable to sleep as her thoughts keep her up at night. So another uh, tense fight here. Mm. One that Luffy does not win. Nope. I thought it ended... I thought it was going to end really bad when he, uh, <laughs> they show like Aokiji like kicking through something. Mm. I'm like, what is he kicking through? It's looked like he's about to kick Luffy in the face, and I, I can't be. <laughs> it's not Luffy's head shattering. You see him in the <laughs> you see him in the next panel. <laughs> so it was a little, uh, little fake out, a little misdirect. Yeah, a little a little little mm. misdirect. But yeah, the fact that Luffy gets completely frozen over though is pretty crazy. Not good. Yeah. I mean, this is, is another just... fight we can unequivocally say he has lost. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Big time. So, yeah, it looks like he's uh, not quite up to the level of a Navy Admiral. Oh. <laughs> Even tried the movie he beat Crocodile with. Yeah. It didn't matter. <laughs> Does anyone else think Aokiji's, like, ice time just, like... I know he's, like, freezing someone, potentially to death. But it kind of looks like he's giving him a hug. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Same movie did the Robin too. He gave Robin a hug. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hug of death. Hug of death. So in order to free something, it seems like he needs to make physical contact with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, because yeah. he waited. He waited when Luffy first attacked. Till so he was holding both Sanji and Zoro, and then waited for Luffy to touch him, and then froze all three of them at once. While they're all like touching his body, so yeah, Put his hand so, in the water, right? Exactly, had to touch the right. water, and then he he didn't make an ice sword out of thin air. He had to freeze the blades of grass, right? So he needed like some kind of like, base like material to to freeze over. So I think that's a little interesting uh, detail here that I'm mm -hmm. uh, now noticing. But that's why uh, he would have to sure. um, hug them. It, but I mean, I guess like he could maybe like just put his like palm on them, but I think like the hug is probably harder to get out of. Yeah. So that that gives him time to like allow the the freezing effect to take over, and so maybe just like I just froze like your shoulder or something. The depictions of the frozen like the ice battle and like the frozen bodies look so good. Yeah. Like it really, like, you can really see the ice. I think it's I think it's really well drawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. And that ice time shot is so good. It, like the midair hug. Yeah. The midair hug. <laughs> midair hug. <laughs> Just give him the cold shoulder. Ooh. Uh, hey. like that. 
He does at the end too when he just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> what what did he mean when he said, "Oh, never mind about Smoker's silly message." Uh, sounds like Smoker was trying to get a message to Luffy, and then uh, he had frozen Luffy before he thought to mention it. And he's like, "Ah, never mind. It's not important." Gotcha. Mm-hmm. This wasn't a previously mentioned message that we know about. It was just like right. Gotcha. Yeah. So we we have no idea what the message is as a reader. Okay. Um. Yeah. I so, thought so. I just wanted to yeah. make sure. I just wanted to make sure I right. wasn't missing something yeah. there. It's like, <laughs> should I know about this? It seems like when he mentions uh, crocodile. He says, uh, "Like Luffy took down crocodile, so you guys did us, a, well, you guys did us a favor." Uh, so I think that reminded him, like, about the message that Smoker had left for him, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, sorry, I missed that window." I'm not. I'm not gonna stick around. And let you uh, unfreeze to tell you the message. So I'm out. <laughs> yeah, he's out. Take my bicycle and leave. <laughs> <laughs> we see it in action here. We see them using the bike. So neat. Yeah, it cool is pretty cool. Of his powers. Definitely. <laughs> like this guy who's just, we see standing up sleeping with his little mask on <laughs> and then almost kills the entire crew. Just goes yep. ding, ding, back yeah. to headquarters. <laughs> like, what a great juxtaposition. Roll like, credits. Yeah. I love Aokiji. I love Aokiji for that. <laughs> yeah, like, what, what an introduction to this character. Yeah. Yeah. I also just love if if it's okay for you going like a slightly different subject. I just Go love the crew it. dynamics in this chapter too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like um, I don't know the fact that Zoro uh, is freaking out specifically. The guy who like didn't care about who was like, "I'll cut <laughs> my legs off." <laughs> no, 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 no you, John, yeah, yeah. we need to get this. We we need to get back to Luffy now. This is bad. This is bad. Right. And Usopp being the one to like tell Chopper to stop panicking. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like everything's just so in flux with this. Like <laughs> as a crew, this is like they haven't run into like a lot of situations like this as a as a unit. Well, Zoro, again, I think that loyalty to his captain is like mm-hmm. like he's like, I I'm letting my captain down if I let him die here. Like it's my job to make sure that nothing happens to my captain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think he's like feeling like the the weight of that on his on himself. And Son just kind of like in the same boat. He's like, like, you know, I'm, I'm sure I have to, to help out too. I gotta go. I can't let Zoro like one up me here. I gotta make sure I'm helping my captain too. Mm, true, true. I felt really bad for Usopp. He's like, all I did was run around a, a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you did run around a lot, Robin would have made it back to the ship, homie. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did good. You did good. You did, you did good. good. You did good. You did good. <sighs> But then Usopp is even calling them cowards for for running. Oh. When was that? Uh so uh when Sanji says it was captain's orders, that's why they, they left him. And Usopp says, even if the captain ordered it, how could you? You're cowards, how could you? Oh yeah, for leaving. Yep, yep. So even coming Which from Usopp, sense. yeah. Yeah. Cause like that's when he's yeah. not coward against other people. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, who said prepare for the worst? Was it Zoro? Yeah. Uh, were you seeing that? Um, right before it cuts back to Luffy's fight, Zoro says, "Cut it out. This isn't a time or place. Just be prepared for the worst." Oh, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. This is a crucial time for the crew. Yeah, it was like, like what Cody was saying. I'm not used to them being this. Like, it's very serious. <laughs> like you were saying, like it's very serious. They're planning for. Worst case scenario, because yeah, I think they realize like that they don't have a chance against this guy. Yeah, I like what Joel's out of saying. their depth. Oh god. Yeah, I was gonna say if he's that back to what Joel was saying. I'm like, oh, the worst, Luffy biting it. Yeah, that does that makes perfect sense, Joel. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else on this one? <sighs> I'm ready to thaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah luckily by the end of the the chapter like it seems like everybody is like okay it was, it yeah. was scary but you know uh Aokiji seems to not have been there to kill them after all like he honored the the deal like he 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 showed that he could have but he was true to his word and he, he let yeah. them go 
That's pretty cool. Then he says off to Water 7, City of Water, next destination. And he also mentions yeah. that they'll be close to headquarters. Yeah. Mm. A, a little uh, bit of information there. A little bit of information. Okay, let's move on to Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 8. Don't forget to blink when you dig, Master Gadatsu. They two continue to dig holes as Gadatsu seems to struggle to blink. It's always something <laughs> don't with this understand. guy. It's always something. <laughs> I'm seeing the trend here. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get Evan summary for the next chapter. Chapter 322, Puffing Tom. The Straw Hats drop anchor for some well-deserved R&R as Luffy and Robin thaw out. After four days, the crew is back to full strength when they spot something strange in the water. Upon closer inspection, it turns out to be a giant frog doing the front crawl. So naturally, the captain orders them to pursue it, having barbecued frog legs in mind. Nami spots the frog's destination, a lighthouse, and at the same time, they start to notice a strange sound. All of a sudden, the ship starts to run aground, and Luffy spots the source of the sound. It's a train. Yes, you heard me right, a train. A steam-powered locomotive in the middle of the ocean comes roaring past the merry-go, narrowly missing the ship. But not missing the giant frog, sending it flying into the sky. The Straw Hats share, or the straw hats stare in shock as the train passes them by. They notice people at the lighthouse and were introduced to Kokoro, station master of Shift Station, her granddaughter, Chimney, and their cat, or rabbit, Gambi. Chimney explains that the train has a steam-powered engine that rotates paddles over the track that runs just below the surface of the water. She also explains the giant frog, whose name is Yokozuna, uh, who is trying, who is testing his strength against the train again, which garners Luffy's respect. Uh, Kokoro then explains the train had just come from Water 7, known as the City of Water, which is known for its shipbuilding and is the destination of their log pose. Luffy decides this will be the perfect place to find themselves a carpenter to join their group. All right, so we are now moving into the next arc. It's our first introduction Ooh. to the Puffing Tom. Did not see that coming. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what were your thoughts on this uh, train on the water? Pretty cool. <clears throat> it reminded me of um, Spirited Away a little bit with like the train a bit, yeah. on the water. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was a really fun chapter. I always love the like fun little in-between moments where we kind of get the crew just like hanging out on the ship, you know, just the, the, the shenanigans that they get into. Yeah. Uh, like Luffy impersonating himself when he was frozen, <laughs> getting, getting laughs out of yeah. uh, Usopp and Chopper. It was pretty hilarious. Um, <laughs> Sanji so trying to swoon uh, Nami with food. Um, I thought this was a really funny panel because he gives her this dish and she says it's delicious. And he screams joy, and there's like a splash in front of him, which I want to say is blood coming from his nose and hitting the ocean in front of him. Because in the next <laughs> shot, he's got like um, clots, like clots in his nose. I don't because I was trying to think, I was trying to think what that could be. You know the panel I'm talking about? With um, okay, so the the one where it um, says where he um, yells joy. Okay. Um. Anyways, that's how I interpreted it. <laughs> And uh, Zoro calls him Dart Boy, which he then explains because <laughs> um, he was saying what, like uh, his eyebrows looked like targets for a, a dartboard, like a dartboard target. <laughs> and that's how you call him Cactus Head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Good stuff. Yeah, I just I love those like little moments in between the arcs. <laughs> I'm gonna butcher this, but Pompeii. I I I did not take French. I, what exactly is that? I didn't look it up. I think it's um. It's just some potatoes. Pom, I'm sure, but... Is it paella? Oh, she says something about potatoes. Is that how you spell paella? Shoestring potatoes. It's P A I L L E. 
Ooh. Like a little thin little fries. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, actually, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Sorry, I just got hungry and I, and then it's not you mentioned <laughs> yeah. food. And I'm like, I want to know oh, more about is. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, did anyone else think that Yokozuna was kind of giving Laboon vibes? I was just about to say he's like, I want them <laughs> two to meet. Like, yeah, they, he's even got the scars. They would be like, friends. Yeah, they would be yeah. friends. Like, they'd get along. Yeah, I, I didn't think of that, but yeah, um, definitely see that. Um, I think the page. So the page after we see we get like a two page shot of the. Uh, train like narrowly missing the merry go and then the next page we get like everyone's reactions which <sighs> is so good and chopper's tongue <laughs> is like <laughs> it's hilarious it's like taking up the entire <laughs> cell it's so good <laughs> his eyes are like popping out of his head i um the way oda does like you know, like the lines that take up like the entire page, like slanted, like mm-hmm. radially, however you want to describe it. I I found like when I was rereading like the first couple volumes, I was like, I don't know, they didn't do it for me the way they used to. It just felt like I felt like he kind of like relied on it a lot in like the earlier volumes, but this feels like a really good example of it. I don't know, something just it just feels it works for me in this one. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I just. I just think they're neat. The slanted panels. I agree. Uh, like, uh, like right. within the like, um, like the ones that go across, like, but like gravely in toward a certain point. I feel yeah. like Oda uses that like a lot to draw emphasis to something or to like establish stakes in a panel. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you talk about the line work in the panel itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. and like. You know, I just, I, I, this particular instance of it, I think, is like my favorite so far. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah. like, it gives like the impression of like, like the wind blowing, like, mm. the, basically being like knocked away by like this, this train just like <laughs> flying right past them. So, <laughs> um, but like, yeah. I also love that, like, um, the double page spread of the Puffing Tom, like the page before that. And it just takes so up the good. whole panel, and then yeah, the, the Mary goes flying. Yeah, and like how Nami is like, how is this like working? Like a vessel shaped like that could never sail on the ocean. So Nami knows like something's weird about this like train. Mm-hmm. But I remember being like um, really confused by this train at first, like my first time through the series, and I thought it was like such a really cool concept to see like this train like on the water. And I like the way that they, they explain it here, but um. Yeah, I just think that's such like a fun idea to have. Yeah, it's, vis- it's, I agree. Visually it's very unexpected, very but once you see, it, like, this is really cool. You know, like, um, of course they'd have a train that runs from Island to Island. <laughs> this is one piece. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I like I like Kokoro. Yeah. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> the we get another ex- example of at this time of the series, at least, Oda's two two ways of drawing women: beautiful supermodels or horrifying <laughs> monsters. Um, <laughs> there's no in between. Uh, so, or little girls, I was too. But like in terms mm-hmm. of adult women, there's two kinds. But uh, yes, otherwise is a great chapter. It's I love yeah, yeah like I I was gonna say this huge laboon vibes with with Yokozuna. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants to test his strength. I love that. It's just, it's just very funny. Mm-hmm. Test your might. Test your might. Auto <laughs> combat. <laughs> <laughs> and just Luffy's reversal. Oh, I'm not oh, that makes sense. like with that much <laughs> determination. No, <laughs> never mind. I've changed my mind. <laughs> what a guy. You know what? It didn't have to like. I, I just love the fact that it was like going into like the individual stops that this one train makes. Yeah. It's just, it's just so nice that he's getting us all these little details. Yeah, it definitely helps with like uh, fleshing out the world. Mm-hmm. I keep it's thinking a- that Nami's bathing suit is like the Union Jack, but no, it's just like. Dude, same. <laughs> yeah. I was getting the yeah. same vibe. Same vibe. <laughs> 
Uh, I do like um, the introduction to Gombe. How Chimney says, uh, "This is my cat, Gombe," and like the text box says, "Actually, a rabbit." <laughs> <laughs> and then, but yeah. he still meows. <laughs> it meows. It's like uh, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm not gonna correct her. <laughs> yeah, so uh, some fun new characters here. Nice, uh, nice. And nice maybe stuff. more new characters to come, like Luffy's like. Looking for a carpenter, which is exciting. I think, <laughs> you know, hunting for a new crew member is an exciting uh, mission. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like they're going to the perfect place because Kokoro tells them that uh, the next city is uh, Water 7. And it's a bustling city known for its shipbuilding industry. The technology there is the best in the world. So, yeah, sounds like a good place to look. It is convenient. Shipwrights all gathered in one place. <laughs> it is convenient <laughs> and like. A fun way that, like, I just accept as part of the story conceit, but of just like mm -hmm. Luffy, I need a cook. Welcome to a famous, wonderful <laughs> island restaurant. I need a doctor. Welcome to an island famous for its hundred doctors. <laughs> I need, I need a shipbuilder. Oh, don't worry, we're about to hit a Carpenterville. Like, like it's like, okay. Like, yeah, one time I want Luffy to be like, well, I need a musician. Well, we got like we got Dave. He plays the banjo. Like. <laughs> Otherwise, cool you're record store, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> you're in luck. We're going to Mirabal Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't, up. I didn't pick up on that, but that's a good point. Uh, there seems to be that trend where it's like, oh, we conveniently find this place that's like good that's for famous like, for the thing that, we need. Type of crew member. <laughs> <laughs> and we, they just had an opportunity to get a carpenter, and they turned it down. So, like, yeah. Mm. It's like good thing he didn't commit to the last one. Like, it's like you go through the store, and it's like sometimes you're like, like you don't buy the first thing that you see. It's like let me look around <laughs> and chop my options first before I commit. Yeah, let me get yeah, the right one. Field. Yeah. <laughs> All right, are we ready to move on? Ready. Yeah. Ready. Okay. Gadatsu's unexpected life on the Blue Sea, Volume Nine. You must bathe after digging so many holes, Master Gadatsu. The two men prepare a hot bath after a long day of digging holes. Cowboy hot tub. <laughs> Gadatu is wearing his towel on his head and is naked. Oh, I, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I think he's actually doing it right this time. And he, he's still doing something wrong. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact this hair is still standing up and therefore like not wet at all. <laughs> we can hold the, the towel up because it's still uh, still intact. <laughs> oh, perfection. He's so silly. God, okay, let's move on. Oh, did you, do you have uh, anything else? No, I, I answered my own question by reading. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Chapter 323. The City of Water, Water 7. Kokoro hands the Straw Hats a map to help them at Water 7 and gives them a letter of introduction for when they arrive in the city to help them get their ship fixed. She warns them to watch out for government people, and they head out. The crew debates as to what kind of person they should look for in their new carpenter crewmate, as Nami realizes the map that was given to them is useless. Usopp hugs the mast of the ship, saying the steel plates are signs of the adventures that they have been on, and the crew looks forward to getting her fixed up with some upgrades. They approach the island and notice it's an entire city that's on the water. They try to figure out which port they should dock at, but they are directed to the shore on the other side of the island by the locals, they don't seem too bothered to see pirates. Nami says that they need to meet someone named Iceberg to give the letter of introduction to, and they'll need to get the treasure exchange for cash. Luffy, Nami, and Usopp decide to head into town. Over at Dock 1, a pirate who recently had his ship fixed has decided that he doesn't want to pay for the work that was done after all. He quickly learns this is a mistake, as the shipwrights of the Galley Law Company make swift work of him. All right, so we get our uh, introduction to the new city of Water 7. We get like a brief sense of like, what kind of place they're getting into. So uh, thoughts on this one? Well, we had fighting cooks. Now we got fighting carpenters. <laughs> yeah, these guys look badass. <laughs> I don't want to mess with these guys. So they're uh, multi-talented. Yeah. They really uh, went all out with the uh, double page spreads this chapter. Yeah, some good yeah. ones. Yeah. Especially that one of just like all the carpenters. It's yeah. like their album cover. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I also just love how like Oda takes this whole issue of like, okay, they want to get a ship right, but they go into a place that has like a generally like safe society. But how do they? Okay, this could be a problem. But instead of Oda having to like find like a convoluted way to like make them fit in, he just he just says, okay, no, that is kind of strange that they're doing this. Well, well, we just make everyone really strong. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, we don't have to go around it. We can just go through it. The issue, I don't yeah. know. It's just. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And we see an uh, example right off the bat. Like he, he quickly establishes that they can hold their own. So they're not going to be strong armed by pirates because, you know, pirates need ships too. So they're like, you know, we're, we're going to help pirates like, get their ships. Like, that's business. Like what they do with the ships afterwards is, you know, that's, that's up to them. But like we're going to make the ships. Um, but like, yeah, they're not going to be like bullied by these pirates. Like they're not going to be able to make a living if they make all, all these ships for free and just have them be like, attacked by pirates all the time so like yeah we, right. we see it like firsthand it's like all right well th they got this down so they're, they're fine yeah it's just uh, it's just one of those things i really like about Oda's <laughs> the fact that he just anytime there would be a problem he's he's like no let me figure out why and how this i can like use this as a way to like explore the setting itself and yeah it just seems like one of his strengths and we see um, from the beginning here as well is like the the locals are just used to the pirates coming in so they're not like scared. Oh, pirates are here! Oh no, we should all hide. Like, oh, it's just another pirate crew. They're just doing their thing. Like, <laughs> no, you gotta, you gotta go. You want to go around that? <laughs> yeah. You, you go to the pirate parking. This is the legitimate yeah. people <laughs> parking. You go to the other side. <laughs> Usopp's like, I gotta. I, I. It took me years to build to to build up a boy who cried wolf reputation. You guys just don't give a shit from the start. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm glad I wasn't born here. Jeez. Uh, Evan, first... what are your thoughts? Oh, I was gonna ask oh. what you thought about um these the first couple characters we're seeing here, but no, it's pretty early in their introductions. Oh yeah. I was gonna talk about the first look at Water Seven, the city. Um oh, this is kind of our first time seeing this like massive fountain in the middle, all these different like ports. Um you can kind of see like water flowing down from the fountain, which looks mm. pretty cool. Yeah. Big cranes. It's just, and it's also massive. It's just like a massive island, seemingly. Yeah. You can see like the buildings kind of like going down, like, like at an angle, like to go like in the, the shape of the island itself. Like it says, like a giant water fountain. Mm -hmm. So like all of the, the buildings are like angled and built in a way too, to allow like the, um, like the, the house is to be built on like the hill and yep. it keeps like the shape and like the water is all to flow down. So I, yeah, I think it's a really cool looking design. Yeah. It's so cool. And we get some like shots of like the canals. It feels almost kind of like Venice uh, yeah. in a way. And it's so cool just seeing all the worlds that we've seen so far in the grand line with like, um, you know, it, I feel like we've seen all the extremes. We've seen like desert islands. We've seen winter islands. We've seen, Sky Islands. Now we're seeing like a water <laughs> island. It's so yeah. cool, like seeing um, how different all of these worlds are, and how much like character you can put into each of these different uh, cities and uh, like cultures and like like you were saying with these people, like they're very stylized. They have like a really cool look because um, it's it's like you said, it's kind of like Baratie all over again, where it's like these people who have these very practical jobs, but they're working on the grand line. So they're dealing with, you know, it's like high stakes, you know, they're dealing with pirates on a regular basis. That's like their main form of business. So like they got to be able to handle themselves in shady situations because they're de dealing with shady people all the time. Yeah. And so, you know, you have these super powered cooks and now we got some super powered craftsmen, um, which yeah, I'm really excited to dive into these characters. I, I do like the character design a lot. Yeah. A lot of cool, like unique designs already right off the bat. And we, love, uh, yeah, they have like yeah. all their craftsman tools and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, Ashran, you were saying? Uh, the guy with the nose. He's giving Usap a run for his money. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 
That's a nose. And we've seen noses. That's we've a, seen that's noses. A... We know noses. <laughs> uh I want the um the guy with the cigar and the goggles. I want his jacket. Yeah, uh, that's a sweet jacket. It's, just, it's sick. It's pretty sick. Yeah. I thought they all have like tools like hanging around their wet waists or carrying different like tools. And oh, this yeah. guy's got a gun. <laughs> yeah. This guy's got a I'm gun. Sure... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's a useful tool for shipbuilding. <laughs> big gun for a big dude. <laughs> have you seen that panel of Hellboy? And like the monkey, like that monkey's got a gun. <laughs> it's just like shoots <laughs> so many shit. It's great. <laughs> I know Breaking Bad came after this was written. But does anyone else get a Walter White vibe from uh from Gun Guy? Oh, I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> it here he broke bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we do get an introduction. Um, briefly, uh, we, we see Mr. Iceberg for the first time. And he's got like a little pet mouse in his pocket. Yeah. That's right. That's the guy that Kokoro said to go meet. Speaking of which, uh, <laughs> she gave like oh, Nami yes. the map. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just like, it's like a, a, a picture. It looks like a five year old Drew. It's, it's like, like yes. a big like hill. It says water seven. And there's like an arrow just pointing to like one side. It says around here. So there, there's no details on this map. <laughs> <laughs> I also love in the very next uh, panel, there's a drawing that Luffy did of what his ideal carpenter would look like. <laughs> and like, I don't, I don't know if Oda actually draws these or not. Like, I just love his Luffy drawings. They're like so childish. Yeah. No, I'm and, sure and the Kokoro drawing as well. Like, <laughs> so good. Yeah, Luffy's like, so we're looking for a guy like this. And like, it says like five <laughs> meters. This monstrosity. <laughs> yeah. Usopp says, if I saw a guy like that, I'd run away. <laughs> I feel like if Luffy had like just drawn that five minutes before Coco could be like, oh, I know exactly who you want to recruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got just a guy. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Mr. Iceberg a little bit. Could be. Maybe we'll be, uh, had a Could little be. foresight there. Does have some stripes. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? The lips. Yeah. <laughs> the hair. Mm -hmm. The swoop. Yeah, the more I look at it, the more it's it's there. And uh, Luffy still talk about adding a bronze statue to the ship. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he's really just he's really decided that's what they're gonna do with it. So wasn't it like um a, a lion in his last uh the last iteration when he wanted oh, a statue, the, the, it was the like statue, yeah, yeah, it was like a big like bronze lion on the front. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think he has a good idea in mind what he wants. Um, and then I also like this panel too. Uh, there's another panel of Robin. She doesn't say anything, but she's just sitting there with like a smile on her face and just kind of enjoying the antics of the crew around her. Mm -hmm. So she just generally seems like, like. She's having like a pleasant time. Like she's just like, enjoying like the, the like the company, you know. It's nice. Little <laughs> <laughs> adventure they're on. Yeah, she definitely seems entertained by the crew, if nothing else. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else in this one? Let's meet these craftsmen <laughs> more properly. Galila Company. <laughs> All right, so before we get there, Gadatsu's Unexpected Life on the Blue Sea, Volume 10. Stand on the ground while you dig, Master Gadatsu. Gadatsu seems to be struggling on how to dig properly with his pickaxe while standing on the wall. Yeah. He's taking uh, some interesting uh, decisions to, uh, to do this here. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all still talk about the SPS much on here, but I am a big fan of these um, potential other looks Luffy could have had for the <laughs> fight with Foxy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Greaser Luffy, that's a vibe. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. And there's like a Sailor Moon reference with one of the mm -hmm. wigs. Yeah, we we, uh, we talked about the SPS if there's something that like stands out to us. Work. 
but sometimes like there's not really too much worth mentioning but sometimes there's some like nuggets in there you know totally you can only talk about being hijacked so many times <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I also wanted to mention that Garo has an exclamation mark that looks like the the swirls on on his shirt. So we've seen like in the past like um, cover stories where their exclamation marks tend to be representative of something unique to them. So like he, he's doing that here. So just wanted to point that out. Mm. I didn't even notice that. That's a good one. <laughs> I just hope it pays off. I hope we get an answer to these squiggles. What the squiggles mean? <laughs> oh, the pickaxe too. Yeah. <laughs> Wowie. All right, let's get Evan's summary for the next chapter. All right. Chapter 324 Adventures in the City on the Water. Luffy, Nami, and Usopp set off into, the, into Water 7 with a wagon full of treasure in tow. As they enter the town, they pass through a rental bull shop, which turns out uh, is the most efficient form of transportation throughout Water 7. A Yagara bull is a horse-like street creature that is saddled with a small boat that seats two people. They rent two Yagara bulls and begin to explore Water 7. After a brief tour, where they discover the city is connected by a series of canals that can run both up and downhill, they arrive at the shopping area. Luffy samples some of the local cuisine and Nami notices that some of the residents are wearing masks. They make their way to the water gate elevator, which works like a canal lock, and will take them to Shipbuilding Island. Outside the elevator, they arrive at Water 7's Main Street, home of the world's best shipbuilding center. The city surra- surrounds a massive multi-tiered fountain, which is a sight to behold. Meanwhile, on the merry-go, Zoro informs Sanji that Robin and Chopper left to do some shopping. Sanji grows impatient and decides to do some shopping himself, leaving Zoro alone to guard the ship a.k.a. take a nap. Soon thereafter, Zoro's nap is interrupted as intruders board the ship. All right. The bull yeah. knew what Luffy wanted in his heart. <laughs> Meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had that in common. <laughs> yeah, this is a really cool introduction to the city. Kind of like the inner workings of um, how people get around, how the city functions. Hmm. It's pretty cool. These bulls are pretty awesome. Yeah. Like little, like sea monsters, like little, like Loch Ness sea monsters. (laughs) Yeah. I do love when Oda takes the time to like introduce us, like the concepts and like the the mechanics of like the new place that they're in and the unique like identity and the factors of like how the stuff works. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always enjoy like that and like how like it shows that Oda put like thought into like how these things work and like what the logistics are and like he he gives us like a rundown of like how it works to kind of um, give you like a good a good sense for like what we're looking at here. Helps when you have Luffy as the protagonist who walks in and has no idea what anything is, so he needs everything <laughs> explained to him. <laughs> you, you have your, your built-in <laughs> in story, uh, like reason why yeah. you have an explanation, and he's not gonna he's like rent the bull. I'll take three. Grill them <laughs> up. It, grill it, up nicely, please. It doesn't feel forced either, which is great. Like it feels yeah. cool. no, like, it, it doesn't. Like it fits it's really well. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally in character. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's super fun. Yeah, you really get to see. It really does look like like the canals of Venice, like a city built on water. You know, people are boating around or on the bulls trying to like get around. Yeah. These cool like open marketplaces and water elevators, canals that flow upstream. Or if they, well, I guess they flow downstream, but you can, you can go upstream on them. Yeah. Which yeah, yeah. comes in handy. Very cool like, that, that explains like how, like logistically again that like that works in this like world that like Otis like these rules. Like this is like their means of addressing that. Yep. And then I like how uh when they uh Luffy shows like the treasure to uh the the Yagra Bowl uh owner <laughs> and he's like, Oh I'll take some of that. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, the price just went up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, there's like these people like walk around in masks that they notice. Hmm. So it seems like there's something going on with that. 
funny looking some, characters. Some kind of like a festival or something. We also see a massive sea creature that people are riding. I wonder if that's like the, the top tier <laughs> that the bull renter was talking about. I said there's three tiers. There's Yagara, oh. Rabuka, and King. So that might be... Mm, could be a king. That might be the king. It's pretty big. Yeah, because it looks like there's a bunch of people on the back. Yeah. It's like, it's like a party party boat. <laughs> party boat. <laughs> <laughs> the booze cruise. <laughs> so I was like, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, right. Kokoro, too. <laughs> I love that um, Zoro and his bull go immediately to the meat stand and they're like yeah we make this water water meat for uh, the bulls and <laughs> Vior has a bunch of them just starts eating them himself <laughs> or I guess she does say it's people food but still I thought that was pretty funny they, they like it too yeah and then uh, meanwhile Zoro is the only one left on the Mary with Sanji so Sanji's like I'm not going to be here with you <laughs> <laughs> Start the ship, okay? Oh, he's already asleep. <laughs> and it's like, good things are I did say behind because at the end, uh, it looks like some people are uh, boarding the Mary. Yep. Trying to kill yep. him in his sleep. <laughs> yeah, also, we do get a few name drops here for some of the, um, the shipwrights. Mm. So we see there's uh, Uchi. Somebody mentions Polly. There's a Lulu. And there's a uh, Tilston. Those are names, all right. <laughs> they are names. <laughs> and it looks like uh, yeah, Luffy's trying to find his way to the carpenters. But yeah, it seems like the, the the townspeople are prideful about like their the shipwrights. Um, the residents seem to like revere them. So it seems like like you can get like a, a sense that there's a lot of like like this is, like a very commercialized like city. Like very business heavy and influence, and like it seems like um, that's kind of like the main draw is like the the business aspect with the the shipbuilding, but there's like a whole bunch of like other things. And just first here with like the like the shops and businesses and stuff, but like yeah, there's a like big industry here that really drives the town. And these these bulls seem to be pretty intelligent. Like they're yeah. kind of just like little sea they're like seahorses. Um, <laughs> And I mean that like literally, not like yeah. <laughs> um, like you ride them like a horse. They, yeah, yeah. They, but they seem to like know where to go, like with little instruction. Yeah, that's good for new people entering the the city. Yeah. All right. Um. Anything else? Seems about right. All right. Let's move on to Gadatu's unexpected life on the blue sea, volume eleven. Unexpectedly. I struck upon something. Hidatu accidentally finds a source of water in the ground. Okay, he's making progress. <laughs> Just not intentionally, but... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they both make the exclamation marks. This time there's three of them, so it resembles the shirt. Sticking to a theme. <laughs> Don't know what the theme is, but he's sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I think you're I think you're on the something though with the steam, like it being steam and like steam bag. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Chapter 325, The Frankie Family. The gang attacking Zoro introduce themselves as the bounty hunters, the Frankie family. They're eager to collect on Zoro's bounty, but Zoro defeats them all easily. Robin and the Chopper explore the city as they come across a bookshop. Chopper is excited and decides to head in. Before Robin can head in as well. A masked figure passes by and whispers, I'm with CP9. Robin looks back, but doesn't see the figure. As Trapper looks at the books, he realizes Robin isn't with him. Luffy, Nami, and Usopp have brought the treasure to an appraiser who admires their haul. He offers them a generous amount of 100 million berries. Luffy is excited and ready to accept, but Nami puts her foot down. She tells the appraiser to try again and give them what the gold is actually worth. Instead, they walk out with 300 million. Now with all this cash, they need to be careful. Luffy immediately almost accidentally throws his briefcase into the water and catches it in time. Luffy is no longer allowed to carry the money. They arrive at Dock 1, where they are greeted by one of the shipwrights, Kaku. Luffy is confused and thinks he is Usopp, 
because he too has a long nose, despite Usopp standing right next to him. <laughs> they ask to speak to Iceberg and show him the letter of introduction from Kokoro. Kaiko explains that Iceberg is actually the mayor of Water 7. He is also the president of Galley Law Company, as well as in charge of managing the sea trains. He says that Iceberg is very busy, but you'll help them with the ship repairs. He says he'll be back in 10 minutes um, to go assess the damages to the ship. They wonder how he's going to get there so quickly, but he takes off and is able to jump around the town extremely fast. Iceberg arrives and tells him Kaku will be fine as he often runs around the town freely. Okay, so we got a little bit of uh, stuff going on here. A bunch of weirdos, these Frankie family guys are. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of weirdos. 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 <laughs> we can silence even crying children. <laughs> uh, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, hey, man. Good for you. Yeah, so we handled yeah. them pretty easily. Yeah. I don't even know if you need to pull out the two sword style rhino cycle. <laughs> cool attack. Yeah, so they don't seem uh cool attack though. Too intimidating. Mm -hmm. I still I love Chopper's little moment. Like, can I look at the books? Yeah. <laughs> Is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to be a bother. <laughs> yeah. I I guess I forgot that when he goes into human form, his antlers disappear. Mm. Has that always been the case? I think, yeah. I believe so, yeah. I guess I just forgot that that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, CP9. What does that mean? CP9. So I think the image of the clown CP9 person, whatever, the masquerade, is one of the creepiest images in One Piece ever. It's just so, like, ominous, yeah. just like... He he, I'm with I'm with CP9, and she's just like immediately starts sweating bullets. Like, what the fuck does Again, that mean? What's yeah. going on? <laughs> Clearly meant something to Robin. Yeah. yeah, she seems to have a clue of what this means. So, um, I did look at um, uh, Stephen Paul's translation for it. Um, because I I remember like this scene vividly from when I watched the anime. Apparently, like like raw translation is just CP9. No, I'm with. Maybe that's like a contextual mm. thing, like carrying over mm. translation wise. But like, it's just like, okay, CP9, and she's just like, oh, this is bad yeah. <laughs> immediately. And that's all it takes. Yeah, wow. yeah. Code word for something. Yeah, yeah. So before we actually got that, I also wanted to mention here that Robin had picked up that. Um, so she, she says that at San Faldo, another island on the sea train route, a costume festival is being held. And Chopper's like, huh, how do you know that? And Robin says, I heard people talking on the street. And Chopper's just like amazed that like Robin picked up on those details just from like listening. So we've seen in the past, like just in general, Robin usually will just sit and watch. Like I was like talking about earlier in the in the volume, like she usually will be a silent like observer. So that's like very much in line with her character. And so that's like like a habit of her that she says, like she like just listens. And you know, tries to pick up information. So, yeah, I, I just think that's a really interesting little character moment here for Robin. It also gives us um, some context as to why people are in these masks and like what's going on with that. Yeah, that's a good point. And then Chopper being excited to go to the bookstore is like when I'm like, oh, can I go look at the toy aisle? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. be real quick. I just gotta check out the toys real quick. <laughs> but so I said it's Robin who's with him because like she's always reading too. So it's like yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude. Of course, yeah, man. Let's all go in. Yeah. <laughs> the person in the bookstore thinks that Chopper is in the costume. Oh yeah, <laughs> he gets away with it. It's Halloween. Yeah, he's like, yeah. right. <laughs> he could probably get away with his normal form too. They just think he's a kid or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then I love this um, appraisal scene that we have here. Mm, that's great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, first we see like the 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 building is like bending with uh, the appraiser's like um, assessment. Like then, like Luffy and Usopp are like like shocked at the amount they're about to be offered. <laughs> <laughs> and so, a good thing they have Nami here, who's a little bit more shrewd, mm -hmm. and uh, she she knows what she has here. So she's like, "I had a number in mind. How about you get closer to that number?" <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's bring that up just a bit. <laughs> yeah. This is Nami's wheelhouse. <laughs> you said it. She put her foot down. Yeah. <laughs> Figuratively and literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There goes Luffy mentioning the bronze statue again. <laughs> he really wants that. Really Top wants of it. mind. <laughs> in the scene where he almost drops the suitcase in the water. <laughs> and they both go diving in and he reaches out and catches it last second. That was a great it Just scene. like how careless Luffy is to just be swinging the, like, the money around and he's like, whoops. <laughs> is it just like, me or just... Guard that with your like... life. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, does he seem like especially crackheaded in this like scene here? <laughs> like more than normal? I would say more than normal. He's I would giddy. Say, like normally, yeah. like if in the like, money. This, this feels like yeah, something they like, would giddy be about. <laughs> this is their first big haul. Like this is their first time really like cashing in. Mm. I think it yeah. would just be like drunk on money. Yeah, money really changes people. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, never, never. No. no, no. <laughs> now, Luffy's the same old carefree person. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and he gets a nice beating in the next uh, next page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't no want to ride this crew like Nami. <laughs> so, they don't want to ride with like any of the money. So, like, they have like the. Um, their suitcases in their boat while Luffy's like by himself. He's like, hey, come on guys, let me carry one of them. Like <laughs> Yep. Gonna be this uh this Usopp guy. <laughs> yeah, it's Usopp impersonator over here. <laughs> he seems cool. I like him. I do too. I like him too. Not quite sure what his ability is, but he's able to just like parkour level a thousand. <laughs> Uh, so just uh, one thing I wanted to point out here, I feel like it's a little bit lost in translation. So uh, one of Luffy's first interactions with him, um, so he says something like, uh, so he looks at the letter from Kokoro, and Luffy looks at him confused, like, huh? Like, are you middle-aged? And he says, but I'm, I'm 23. So one thing that doesn't, like, translate to why Luffy is confused about his age is because the way he speaks in Japanese, like, he uses, like, um, the, like the phrase that he uses is specifically like how somebody that would be like an like an elder would use like like a, like a more formal like way of speaking. Oh. Mm. So that's not, not something you can really get from this context. So I think they might try to use like language that might like words that might sound like something that like would be like oh like maybe like you whippersnappers or something. But like it's not something that's immediately apparent from like the English version that we see here. So just, just a little context as to why people are confused by this age. Gotcha. Because that's why he talks. Yeah. They do say, well, you sure talk old. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's just something's like, I'll, I'll jot over. Um, what's the thing I saw? Um, he, I get like a very professional vibe from him. Mm. Yes. But yeah, I don't know if it's the full, uh, yeah, old man. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's pretty much the context of the interaction. But he's definitely not an old man because he's he's yeah. pretty uh, spry and energetic here. As he like he does a few stretches and he's off. You know, he jumps off like this uh, tower and it's like free falling. It's a pretty cool panel. People seem to recognize him as well. It's not his first mm -hmm. time jumping yeah. from rooftop to rooftop. It's probably like a good daily occurrence. Yeah. That's a great shot of him jumping off the building there. Yeah, definitely. They call him Mountain Wind. What a cool guy. <laughs> All right, uh, anything else? I think... Oh, okay. Did you have something? No, no I, just, I just like Kaku. Okay. <laughs> I, just like, I just like him a lot. God. No, his nose is, his I'm nose a fan. is square. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that's pretty hilarious. So like how Luffy's like legitimately confused that I'm right like, next is, to is you. Like, Usopp. <laughs> <laughs> what a moment. Uh... All right, moving on. Gadatsu's unexpected life on the Blue Sea Volume 12. I unexpectedly awakened the legendary boss of the earth. 
Water wasn't the only thing that was dug up as a giant mole now stands before them with a giant pickaxe. Oh boy. Hooey. Yeah, so this guy looks like he means serious business. All right. Uh, let's get Evan's summary for the next chapter. Okie doke. Chapter 326, Mr. Iceberg. Sanji explores the shopping center as he does some grocery shopping. On his way back to the merry-go, he gets lost. Fortunately, he spots Robin, who is accompanied by a masked companion. He calls out to her and chases her down, but as soon as he catches up to them, they seem to mysteriously disappear into thin air. Meanwhile, Kaku arrives at the merry-go where Zoro mistakes him for a long-nosed crewmate. <laughs> back at the <laughs> shipbuilding factory, Luffy, Nami, and Usopp are introduced to Iceberg. Water 7 Mayor and Gali La Company President and his secretary Khalifa, who has a full dossier on the Straw Hat crew. Oh, and his new pet mouse, Tyrannosaurus. Iceberg offers to give the Straw Hats a tour of the shipbuilding factory, but before they can begin, the Frankie family arrive, stealing two suitcases from Usopp, making off on Yagara Bulls. Just then, a shipwright named Polly, who's being pursued by bill collectors, sees an opportunity and jumps from a bridge above the Frankie family. Using a rope technique, he wrangles the Frankie family from their Yagara Bulls and inadvertently wins back the suitcases. Usopp thanks Polly for his heroics, but now knowing about the money in his possession, Polly takes off. <laughs> I'd like to say I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd like to say that I wouldn't. Yeah. But also, like, this man's in debt, and, like, you know. Thanks for saving my 200 million berries in those two suitcases. <laughs> oh, find yours, Faye. Wait, uh, I, <laughs> how much? He did them a service. I'm just saying. <laughs> Only did nothing yeah, right. wrong. Finder's fee. <laughs> Even though, like, I had seen the scene multiple times before, and I knew that, like, the money was going to get yanked, my heart still skipped a beep when I saw them behind Usopp. Yeah. Like, audible gasp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's the bronze statue. <laughs> That's the bronze statue. It's nice we're getting like a bit more personality, all this development of uh, this neat little cast of characters here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, f I find his approach to uh, his uh, his schedule is pretty yeah. funny here. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Now cancel everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm powerful enough to do to be able to do what I like. I really am. <laughs> You're a total failure as a mayor. <laughs> <laughs> then after canceling everything, he's picking his nose. He's like, today's boring. Let's just do a tour. <laughs> <laughs> you do a tour every day. He's like, uh, this is boring. I got nothing planned. You want to well, see if you just clear it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he just so, got the mouse that day yeah it's brand new mouse <laughs> tyrannosaurus <laughs> that's funny oh my god <laughs> i kind of love that act for a mouse to act on impulse a lot And the way he also handles the letter from Kokoro, he reads it and it just says, check out their ship for them. And he just rips <laughs> it up. <laughs> and then the, the like, um, like, please, can you like fix the ship? And he's like, um, sure. And like, oh, that was easy. It's like, they didn't really like, have to like convince him. Um, mm -hmm. And they ask why he, he tore up the letter. It's like, the kiss is creepy because there's a little kiss mark on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't explain why he's ripping it up at first. Yeah. Again, like it's just magically so convenient for them, but it doesn't it doesn't feel out of place yeah. at all. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Iceberg seems to know the Frankie family pretty well. Or is Yeah, not their first their rodeo. Hooligans. Yeah. That sounds like they have like frequent run ins with them. Speaking of run ins, Sanji sees Robin. Mm. And the mysterious uh Masked person gets even more mysterious. Mega mysterious. Yeah. 
Like Robin seemed to be ignoring Sanji. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After she just you said that she like you know, she's observant and listens to people. So you would think, you know, maybe she would have picked I, up if she heard Sanji. Oh, it's just it's just do so. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Hold it! Who the heck are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I love the, um, the the panel recognition. Yeah, where like um, where like, he like you can see like a side by side with like Usopp and like Kaku, and then and then Zoro was like, "Wait, you're not Usopp!" Like, <laughs> which like to be oh, fair, yeah. a bunch of dudes did just attack the ship. <laughs> he, he's waking up. He's, he's on defense mode. Little, yeah, yeah. yeah he's a little tired. Maybe a little. A little ornery at that point. <laughs> yeah, and then we um, see Polly in action. Uh-huh. Lassoing a man with the world's biggest face. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a Khalifa. Also in action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe a little too much action when uh, she kicks her in the face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Poor her, so. <laughs> Poor ice uh, Yep. Friendly fire. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, we're good to move on. Yeah. I just also like Polly's fighting style a lot. Like, it just seems so creative, like just using ropes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just superpower. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll see more of that in action. Yeah. Pretty handy with those ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does like come in handy with uh, ship ship building. I'm sure it has to rope stuff up all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm just realizing his jacket has cigar holders on it. Like those are all cigars <laughs> in his j- jacket. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Smoker yeah, would be that's, proud. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Smoker's like, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that jacket? All right, let's uh, finish off the volume. Chapter 327, Shipbuilding Island, Repair Dock Number 1. Shipwright Rob Lucci apprehends Polly, who recovered the Straw Hat's stolen money. Iceberg apologizes and says uh, it's because the Frankie family wasn't able to take the money. They explain the Frankie family is a group of dismantlers um, that are also bounty hunters on the side. They target pirates and dismantle their ships. Lucci and Polly return with the money. Lucci's pigeon, Hattori, also apologizes for the trouble, which amazes Luffy that the bird can talk. Polly is still upset that Luchi stopped him from taking the money, so he sends some ropes at him. After a brief fight and a demonstration of some impressive abilities, Luffy tells Polly that he shouldn't be fighting Luchi, as a pigeon is the one who is calling the shots. Now he figures out he's using ventriloquism, which amazes Luffy and Usopp. Iceberg admits that the shipwrights are all pretty strange, but they are all highly skilled. He brings them into Dock 1, where they can see the large workforce making a massive galleon. Luffy asks Iceberg if he wants to join his crew. To which he says he can't, as he's the mayor. But if you can find someone who is willing to become a pirate, they're free to go with Luffy. As Usopp is admiring the cannons, the members of the Frankie family have returned and sneak up on him. At this time, Kaku returns with an update on his assessment. After inspecting the Mary, he has determined the ship is not repairable and won't, uh, won't even be able to make it to the next island. The Mary will never sail again. Dun dun dun! Say it ain't so. Oh, Evan. <laughs> Say it ain't so. I'm sorry. I had to. Hear I refuse to believe that as fact. I refuse. Let's just say you won't be alone. Yep. <laughs> it's, a, it's a valid take. Yeah. So pretty shock, shocking end to the the volume. You got you got you got Zoro. Looking all melancholy, being like, Mary, is that true? Like, oh my god. <laughs> and we just end the volume on the figurehead. Oh, I'm fine. Sure. <laughs> that can't be the end of that. No, no, it's definitely not the end of that. <sighs> yeah, so... I mean, we'll, we'll see. But um, this is Kaku's opinion um but i mean if anybody can fix the mary i think it's probably going to be these guys yeah so i think, I think they're in the right sure. place 
we did spend five chapters hyping up their skills. I, I, they sound credible. Yeah. And we get some and... cool shots of the shipyard itself in this chapter. Mm -hmm. They're building like a huge galleon. It is like insane, the scale of that. I also really like this chapter too. It's, it's so neat seeing all these just weird, weird personalities interacting <laughs> with each other. <laughs> like this was already an interesting bunch, but now we have this the weird pigeon ventriloquist was a man, and then it's just hooey. <laughs> yeah, he might be the weirdest one so far. <laughs> he is quite weird. <laughs> I think if there's like I know you like you, uh, this isn't mainly about the live action, but there's one Luffy moment I want to see adapted, and one that I really want Inyaki Godoy to pull off. Is when it's like, no, no, the guy who made fun of you? <laughs> the bitch. <laughs> the bitch. <laughs> I mean, that's peak Oda I love, I love so much. Uh, uh. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just absolutely hilarious how um, it, Luffy thinks that the pigeon's calling the shots and like, like no, you're real beefs with the pigeon. Like, you know, yeah. leave that guy alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly it's so silly it takes him so long just to get over that it's a talking pigeon too yeah <laughs> multiple it, frames of like it's a pigeon it's a talking pigeon it's a talking pigeon it talked again <laughs> <laughs> but he's equally impressed when he finds out like what's really happening so. i feel like if you like did the thumb trick for luffy he'd be like holy shit <laughs> yeah are you buggy? Are you like Buggy's cousin? Like, like <laughs> did you also eat the fruit? Like, <laughs> uh. so we do have like a brief fight here with uh Polly and Luchi, and Polly's using his rope action. So we do see the the rope techniques that he has, and he like flips Luchi over, like he throws him with the with the rope, and Luchi like catches himself. Uh, using just like one hand and like pretty much like digs into the ground so like he seems like crazy strong it's impressive yeah so we've got like a lot of different like fighting styles and levels of strength here a lot of cool uh feats yeah for sure yeah. i just i really one of the things i really like about this arc and spoilers, Water 7 is probably one of my favorite arcs, if not my favorite arc of this entire manga. But I, it's just neat how Oda is taking so much time to set the stage with, like, the setting and the characters and, like, the way that this whole city works. And just this, like, okay, Luffy wants a carpenter, but, like, look at all these different options we have. I don't know. It's just... And they all seem unique he's... and weird, and you're like, oh, any of these mm. could, could fit on the crew. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's really just exploring. But like already, um, like they get their hands on some money and people are already after it. So like, <laughs> yeah. uh, like they have to be careful to like try to keep this money. Um, but yeah, I mean, it seems at at this point the the Frankie family still isn't done uh, wreaking havoc. <laughs> like this is like the third time we've already seen the Frankie family, and they just seem to be like like always in the way. So like they're uh. They're just like pests that they have to deal with at this point. Didn't they also mention something about like the leader of the Frankie family? Like these aren't even like the main guys. These are just some of like, yeah, right. Wasn't like that Iceberg mentioned, like yeah, he stays in the shadows, something like that. Yeah, it's like these guys you don't have to worry about, but like the leader, he's a problem. Yeah, and a bunch of mooks. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the Mary is going to be an expensive fix, mm -hmm. if if they can fix it at all. I mean, hopefully there's still budget left for the bronze statue. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Also, just really like um, the little bit of exposition we get on onto Iceberg, the fact that he just like made a conglomerate of these seven competing companies. Mm. Mm, yeah. Like it's, yeah. It's, it's no wonder that everyone in the city loves him so much. Like, he just seems like he's, like, a good leader that can rally people around him. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, that, that must be why they call it Water 7. Mm-hmm. Checks out. 
But yeah, he's also um, a skilled shipbuilder in his own right. Yeah, he's just the whole package. What a guy. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't seem interested in uh, joining Luffy's crew, though. Nah. <laughs> no. He's got his hands full. But, but he looks like the sketch. <laughs> He doesn't I mean, like still, catch, right? still some arc left, so. Well, I'm, I'm saying we can't rule him out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> True. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people that Luffy's tried to recruit were not interested at first, so. Mm-hmm. Actually, the major, majority, if not all of them, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much started off un, uninterested. <laughs> the only one that seemed really interested was Robin, who like forced herself onto the crew. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Everyone else said no first. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Robin, she is uh she does not seem to be having a good time right now. Yeah, so now she's yeah, MIA. What's up with that? Oh, that was the last chapter. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that, that, I mean that's I mean so she's still not having a good time, I expect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm true. Know. Or maybe she's having a great time because she's going to the, the festival. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. She's wanted a mask. That's why she only had one ticket, so she's like, <laughs> I gotta sneak out of here. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else on this chapter or volume as a whole? I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. Good stuff. Good stuff. Except okay. for the Mary. This seems sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that better get fixed. Figure that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So that would be for another time. Um, but for right now, uh, we did finish the Long Ring Longland arc. Um, so how about we get some rankings here? Let, let us start with Sean's rankings. Um, yeah, Sean, do you want to give us a quick rundown of your current rankings? Yes. I have uh, an S tier, Arlong Top Park at the very tippy top, followed closely by Alabasta. In Skypea, in, in, in A, <laughs> I have Skypea, then Barasi. Then Little Garden, Logue Town, Romance Dawn, Syrup Village, Drum Island, and Jaya at the bottom of A. And then B, I have Orange Town at the top, then Whiskey Peak, then Reverse Mountain. I have nothing in C, and I have nothing in D, except, uh, nope, yeah, I, okay, yeah. Um, so are we, is Long Ring, Long Island, is that containing Foxy as well, or is that its own little thing, or is that? Um, that that's all Foxy. Okay, so, so basically the Foxy uh, I, I made no illusions about my distaste for Foxy in some ways early on, but as I reread this, I realized, and it's something I've learned more over the course, I did some research too, it's a largely because the anime drags that shit out way longer than the manga does. Um, <laughs> it, it's really not that bad in the manga, but in the anime, it's like, I'm so fucking sick of these stupid foxy bullshit thing that's very um, valid <laughs> so so judge purely as the manga i'll put it at the bottom of b it's still like not that impressive to me but uh it's not a d like i was initially going into this being like this is my first d i'm like no it's not it's the bottom of b okay yeah that's that's fair and uh to sean's point like they added filler essentially for the foxy arc and dragged it out and put like more games in there and like there was like more like, swapping of the crew and everything, so like it it really does get dragged out. Um, whereas like the manga does feel a lot more concise and like a quick adventure. Like it's it it doesn't take too long to get through it, but yeah, like the the anime does really drag it out. So I I could definitely see that being very valid. All right, uh, Evan, how about you walk us through your current rankings? All right, currently in S tier, I have Alabasta, Arlong, Arlong Park, Karatie, and Skypea in that order. And then in A, I've got Drum Island, Little Garden, uh, Lodge Town, Jaya, Romance Dawn, Syrup Village, and in B tier, Whiskey Peak, Reverse Mountain, Orange Town. And I think I'm going to put this one. I think we're gonna put it at top of B. In so before Whiskey, Whiskey Peak. Peak. Yeah, I I don't know. I just thought that this was a really funny, like when Joel and I were talking about. It, I think it was like one of the funniest <laughs> arcs that we've gone through so far. I just thought like <laughs> Oda's jokes were all all landing. Yeah. 
All right, cool. And um, yeah. Um, how about we get Cody's uh, rankings as well um, up to this point? Because we haven't had sure. your insight into the, the series quite yet. So where you kind of stand here? Yeah. Uh, starting things off, I may have a, a quite controversial take for my top arc. Uh, <laughs> for me, S tier is Baradier as the top arc, followed by Arlen Park and Alabasta. Um, and this may just be nostalgia my own subjective uh bias talking but i think our barati just has like a lot of big emotional impact and i guess not not to say arling park and alabasta don't because like obviously it's arling park and alabasta but i think the way it just ramps up um and shit just hits the fan to me there's something that just feels really special about that and to me that's why it's one of my favorites um sanji was also my favorite straw hat for a very long time um so that's why that's in my top one right now but hmm. it's very 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 closely followed by Aaron park and alabasta um a tier drum island jaya orange town skypia romance dawn and then b tier i had syrup village uh reverse mountain then Logue Town, then little garden and whiskey peak um and i enjoy longing longland um and i do think i i got more of an appreciation for the comedy of it um this time around um but i do feel like i i, I put it in like it's still b tier um i'd say just above little garden whiskey peak but only because like logetown reverse mountain i think those ones just hit such heights um that it's you know it's it's hard to get to that level and i think long wing long land is just it's a breather arc and i feel like it's, that's just where it goes for me um yeah but yeah mid b all right fair yeah and then when it comes to like the series like everybody has such a personal experience with the series like there's just some arcs that will hit harder for some people like and they mean something different to everybody and that's like what i think is so great about the series is Different things can mean different things to people, and they have different appreciation. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's what I love about the series. Like, it's there's just so much to love, and like at the end of the day, it's like, like what do you enjoy the most out of the series? You know, this was like the first uh, tournament arc, like yeah, tournament yeah. style, or like they had different stakes because it was more of a tournament instead of like a battle to the death. I mean, it was right. a battle to the death, but like you know, <laughs> kind of in a different. <laughs> had rules and fans and kind of had a different vibe. Yeah, well, I don't think anybody was meant to die. No, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> Could have died. Could have died. <laughs> All right. So uh, for my current rankings, um, S tier, I have Alabasta, Arlong Park, Jaya, Drum Island. A tier was Skypea, Bratier, Little Garden. B tier was Syrup Village, Log Town, Orange Town, Romance Dawn, Whiskey Peak, Verse Mountain. So I probably have the most different take on Long Ring Longland. Uh, I put an A tier after Skypea. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Ahead of like, Baratier? Yeah. So <laughs> probably to Cody's dismay, but uh, uh, to, I to like. Right here. <laughs> 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 no, um, but like I was saying, it's a, it's a personal thing for everybody. And um, I think this is commonly a lot of people's least favorite arc in the series. Um, but for me personally, like I had such a good time with it. Like Evan and I were cracking up, like talking about it. Like, like we talked about like last volume, I think was like legitimately the funniest volume in the entire series of one piece. <laughs> like there was like so many jokes, like some of my favorite jokes in the entire series are in that, like the, the, like the interactions with Sanji and Zoro and they're, they're part of the fight. Um, like you know, like the stuff with, like Tanji, like and like him being like so goofy and drinking like the, <laughs> like the, wanted to drink the milk, <laughs> that, that became cheese. <laughs> uh, yeah, just like, a lot of like really funny stuff, um, like in the arc. And I, I just have such a good time with it. I, I think it's a lot of fun. And some like the, um, I some some of the best interactions with the crew as well, because now we've gotten to a point where like we know these characters so well, and now we kind of have like these versions of the characters that are so. Like familiar to us and like they can really play around 
with like their personalities and that really shines i think in like an arc like this where it's kind of glow stakes uh plus also like the um the Aokiji stuff was like pretty crazy um but like that's like kind of like secondary to i think the the like just the overall humor of the arc but that's also like a really cool like flip side to it where it's like very serious all of a sudden where things like feel like they just got real and like it's such like an introduction to this character um so i, I just think overall it's actually a much stronger arc than i would initially expected going into it and i just like really enjoyed going through it this time yes 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 yeah all yes, right stuff. all right so lastly we do have the villain rankings so this is a shared list that we have so currently, S rank, we have Crocodile, Arlong. Next, we have an A tier, uh, Enru, then Buggy. B tier was Kuro, Wapple, and then Krieg. Uh, Sean, where would you put Foxy? Okay. Uh, I'd put him... Like, I, I, I think he's our first C tier. I don't know. I know you're going to disagree, but I'd say he's our first C tier. Not a D tier. I don't despise him, but he's our first. <laughs> me, I'm going to say C. Okay. How about you, Evan? I was kind of picturing him like on the, I put him on the same level as like Wapple. I thought he'd be like on either on one side or the other of Wapple. All right. So, uh, do you think um, above or below Wapple? Mm, I guess below but i don't know i'd put him in the, in the same general vicinity as waffle all right and uh how about you cody this is tough so <laughs> i am still getting what do you think the... of what do you think of the current standings too we haven't yeah. really gotten your opinion <laughs> yeah um are you shocked not completely so i did watch like part of um actually i, I watched your previous ranking um before this um, and I was surprised by the fact that Anaru is higher than Buggy, but again, subjective bias. Mm -hmm. Um, completely agree with, with Crocodile and Arlong and S tier. Um, and I guess when I was rereading Skypia, like to me, like the difference between S and A tier is that so many times during Alabasta, I think, God, Crocodile's such a bastard. <laughs> Whereas anyone like this guy's a dick. You know, I feel like that's like the yeah. difference between like S tier and A tier. I hope that's not mm -hmm. too much swearing for the podcast. No, no, no. Um, um, I have said but like, much worse. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I think of Foxy, I'm like, yeah, this guy's a dick. Yeah, this guy just, this guy really sucks. He's really underhanded. He is just, he does not care about screwing people over. Um, he's, I guess, like playing above his station or whatever. And to me, I was going to put Foxy like, a tier below buggy but then when evan mentions wapal i'm like well kuro is also like just as scheming but more capable i guess or i guess more ambitious uh so i think i'd put Fo i'd put foxy adjacent to kuro whether that's low a or like mid b or high b it's somewhere in that zone personally okay so you put him above wapal yeah, definitely above Waffle. Okay. Um, and I, sorry, one more thing. I, yeah. I know Krieg is last. I don't know if that's because we dislike him or like him the least. Our general consensus is that he relies entirely on gadgets and gizmos and he doesn't really, he just has a big bag of tricks and he doesn't feel that impressive otherwise. Yeah. And then he kind of got like overshadowed by Mihawk. Yeah. Sure, so, and like, Mihawk's in, still in his own arc. Yeah. In his own arc, he wasn't even like the, like the biggest like threat so he, he kind of felt like more underwhelming in comparison to somebody like mihawk i see okay yeah i guess i didn't feel as much on the latter point um out of the mihawk thing just felt more detour to me but again different experience um and less communal for my um reading of it um i like the fact that creek feels like a big bag of tricks because i feel like that's like the whole thing is like you can't be this this guy sucks. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but that also might be like conflating him with the arc rather than him. Like him in a vacuum, yeah, he sucks. But him in context of his arc, oh, okay, Oda's saying something. So that yeah. may be where the where things diverge a bit there. Yeah, I think it's so, really yeah, overall as a thoughts. whole in comparison. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I would I would actually put Foxy right above Kuro. So, okay. but, but in B tier, I would I'll keep him in B tier. Um, yeah. So uh, at this point, I think we don't have enough votes to put him uh, above Wapple. So uh, we don't have enough agreement to put him there. So I think I mean, we'll have to put I'm him. I'm putting him above Wapple. I, yeah. That's what I was saying. I was like, either side of Wapple is fine with me. Okay. Like, okay. So do we want to put him between Kuro and Wapple? Fine by me. <laughs> I mean, you Worse know my me. feelings. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So that, that's where he'll be in B tier. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think Foxy's just like a fun villain. Again, not like super high stakes, but just like like the gags and like the the concept of the Davy back fight. I think was a good time. Um, overall, I, I just think he's like very entertaining as a whole. But like, like in a different way than like Wapple or Krieg, I just think he was like a more fun villain to have in the the context of his arc. He did have an undefeated record, too. It was you impressive. Mention that impressive <laughs> yeah. record. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, that will conclude this episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. You can find this episode wherever podcasts are found at We Are Reading One Piece Podcast at Buzzsprout.com or on our YouTube channel at We Are Reading One Piece. Um, at we Are Reading One Piece. This is a spoiler free channel up to where we have recorded the podcast. So if you're new to the series, you can visit the channel there. You can also find me and this podcast on my YouTube channel at Pirate King Codex for various One Piece content. Next episode, we'll be discussing volume 35, Captain. I've been Joel and I've been joined by Sean. This has been Sean. Evan. Hey, thanks for listening. And Cody. Great to meet you. (laughs) All right. Well, thanks for coming along. Be sure to bring along all of your hopes and dreams, and we'll see you on the next episode. Mary, will you really never sail again? (laughs) 